emphasis. Its uh, first quarter earnings came out just a short while earlier and has thrown up no surprises. Its revenue has remained flat. Profit, meanwhile, has dropped nearly 4%. But uh, the CEO and MD, the outgoing CEO and MD, SD Shibulal, says that stable demand environment has prompted the tech giant to maintain its FY15 dollar revenue guidance at 7.9%. Here at a slice of that conversation. Overall demand environment remains largely stable across multiple verticals based on what we have delivered in Q1 and our expectations for the year we have retained the revenue guidance at 7 to 9 percent for FI15. Now, if you've got our entire team joining in with the details of Infosys results, how comes on the breakup of the way the numbers have played out. Priya has the hits and misses as well. Uh, all right, so let's start off with you, Agam, first. Now, in uh, terms of the numbers, more or less, they seem to be in line because the, st uh, the stock also has been actually holding up pretty well. What, what are some of the key takeaways? Look at the way the numbers have played out. Well, when you consider the, the, the top line, that is, uh, in terms of dollar revenues, we have seen an increase around 2% year on year, or rather quarter on quarter, uh, where, uh, you know, uh, it's been very much in line with what the street was expecting. Even in terms of uh, the total revenues, that we, we, we've we seen a drop around nearly 1% at around 1,207, uh, 12,770 crores. Uh, once again, in terms of profits, which are a notch above street expectations, that's where we've seen a little bit of a surprise, uh, which is uh, down as much as 4% at 2,886 crores and the reason why we've seen a relative outperformance in terms of the margins as well as our profits is because the cross-currency movements. Of course, we do know that uh, Infosys did take a prior wage hike in uh, this, the first quarter um, on the basis of which the managers has indicated that they would see a height of around 250 to 300 basis points. That said, in terms of uh, you know attrition, we have seen a relatively higher attrition rate of around 19 0.5% for the quarter. In terms of client additions, uh, well, we've seen a little bit of stagnation, but we've still seen about 61 clients added in this quarter. In terms of geographical uh, returns, once again, we are looking at uh, North America uh, seeing a, an increase around 3.7%. However, we're also seeing a decline in India's uh, return of as much as nearly 7%. So uh, that's where a little bit of a hit is coming. But this was also indicated by the management. And finally, when it comes to the industry segment, we are looking at at about nearly 2% growth in the FSI segment quarter on quarter and uh, the manufacturing segment has seen a growth around 2.5%. Overall, uh, that's also the reason why you are looking at the profit number slightly above the street expectations for now. So, you know, emphasis seems to have definitely got it right in some parts, but there also misses as far as some of the other segments go. Priya, you know, on a Y and Y basis, you're seeing revenue from North America, its largest uh, geographical location, stagnating, also stagnation as far as the uh, large clients go. Absolutely, so now that there have been some sort of some places where Infosys has got it right. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, there are several things that are working in favor of Infosys at this point. One is, of course, the management has indicated that pricing has been stable, and also see, they're seeing positive trends as far as deal wins go. Uh, in fact, the number of active clients have increased to 910 versus 890 uh, in the uh, previous quarter. But remember that this increase has mainly been in the smaller ticket clients. The larger ticket clients have more or less stagnated. Uh, over the last few quarters. But as far as repeat business is concerned, that was a, a, a bone of contention over the last uh, few quarters. But that's increased to 99% versus 96% on a sequential mm. basis. Uh, also, uh, as you said, North America has seen a growth uh, as far uh, on a sequential basis. It's grown, grown about 3.7%. Uh, but really, uh, there are other geographies that have seen a sort of decline in India being one of that. It's seen a decline of about 6.7% on a sequential basis and that's largely because uh, domestic revenues have been uh, difficult for uh, IT companies to garner in view of the elections in the new government. Uh, also, uh, they have seen uh, attrition, which is a major concern, 9.5% versus 18.7% and the management has said that they are taking measures and they're giving the right kind of salary hikes to employees who have been well deserving. Uh, and so clearly a stagnation in big, big ticket clients like we talked earlier uh, is also another the bone of contention, but let's see how this pans out for other companies that will be declaring their results in the next few days. All right, Priya, thanks for getting us those uh, updates there. All right, let's also welcome in Mohit Jain, research analyst for technology at Anandarati Securities, is joining in. Mohit, uh, morning, thanks for taking the time out to talk to us. 
Let's try and understand as to what you made of the infi numbers and what's the first cut looking like. See, if you, from, from our point of view, we are seeing at two key numbers. One is that the volume growth for the company has been very strong in this quarter. So while on the headline revenue growth, we may see a little lower than what we were expecting. But uh, if you look at the volume growth, that's quite encouraging. And it's this number gap of two, three quarters where we are seeing such a strong. Also, positively, because the company is now more willing uh, to to adjust on the pricing to large deals and that's probably good news for shareholders because uh, in the last few years we have seen when the company performance was not so good, uh, the main reason was that they were not able to win a, a large share of large deals and that's where we, we call it course correction but I think I'll read it positively. Second, US geography growth has been very, very strong. Uh, now for IT companies where US remains a primary market and one of the most competitive markets, if, if a company starts winning, winning a higher revenue share there, I read that positively as well. Sure. So the only negative for us was attrition, 19.5% uh, and, and we are closely watching that number. Uh, but if, sure. so we are closely watching that number, 19.5% looks very high. Uh, the management also commented that it's above it's above the target and the comfort range. So that that's where our, 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 we are we are looking at. You know, speaking of geographical revenues, North America on a Q and Q basis has contributed about 3.7 percent. But the trends we are seeing is that on a Y and Y basis, uh, revenue from all other geographies has fallen marginally, except for Europe. Uh, given uh, you know the kind of model that TCS is experimenting with in uh, uh, in uh, Japan, do you think this is going to be a strategy for emphasis as well, where it's de-risking outside of uh, North America? Uh, so two points here. One is that uh, my opinion is that TCS, whatever TCS does, is 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 going in their favor. Uh, if you look at it, beat geography, beat service lines, the diversification, the portfolio, uh, the growth. So it's, that's one company which you know is is everything is going in their favor. Uh, so and it's not fair to compare Infosys to TCS every time because Infosys is under transition and they have seen bad times over the last two years and we are. Uh, now, the company is in transition. We are seeing some acceleration in growth rates or at least the signs of it coming on. So, I wouldn't directly compare TCS versus Infosys. And, uh, but what I would say is that that also sort of gets reflected in the valuation of these two companies. Uh, whereas, if there, there is one company where you see scope of margin expansion going on and we saw this in this quarter with utilization being pulled up. Uh, we also, and whenever these companies are in transition, it's quite natural to see these quarterly fluctuations and I wouldn't uh, read too much into the India decline on a sequential basis. Uh, they mentioned in the press release that they are also facing this because India, uh, they are not, or, or they were not getting their sales engines right as far as the public sector uh, IT consumption goes. So that's one thing. Also, it's a very small percentage of your overall revenue. So India geography for enforces will not move the needle here or there uh, in any case. Europe, yes, there was a, there was a sequential, we can say sequential softness, uh, but I think that's more like a quarter. Last quarter, also, if you recall, uh, when there was a revenue decline, we probably read too much into it. While there was, it eventually turned out to be a quarterly aberration, uh, looking at the retail and manufacturing numbers and their growth in this quarter. So I would say wait and watch. Company is under transition. We will see some fluctuations. It is not going to be a very smooth journey, but probably we are headed in the right direction. Uh, then the stock call uh, more because in terms of the way it's actually playing out right now, but you look at the count, it's actually holding on to gains of just 1, 1.5% 1 right now. Any uh, st uh, call on the stock and what investors should be doing with this counter? So, 1.5% is, is, is today's gain, but if you, if you try to plot it a little longer, uh, in the last 1.5 months, I think the stock has returned around 11-12%. So we shouldn't ignore that as well while looking at one-day returns. Uh, our target price on the stock is 3,700. Uh, and as we can see from Q2 numbers, the guidance is maintained at 7 to 9%. 7% doesn't look uh, a difficult target. 9% is what I think the company should should probably look at. And do 9%, they need one very good plus and then few quarters of 3% of plus and they should be that number.